Good morning, everyone. Today is July the 17th, 2024, and this is your thought for today. Let's begin with a word of prayer. Father, we're so grateful that we have made it to this hump day. We pray that your presence will be with us, and we thank you for what we shall all experience from this thought today. Whatever my brothers and sisters are going through, may they know that you can handle it all. For us in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Happy Win Happy Wednesday, everybody. <clears throat> Today is a very special day. Today I have a very important interview. Today at 845 Central Time. And so I just ask for you all to keep me in your prayers. And when I see you on Friday, I will let you all know what the outcome was. Today, before we go into what our title of our thought for today is, I want to go back to the same scripture. Reminder that we have been reading for the last two days. Um, on Monday, I shared with you. Uh, Psalm 130, 1 through 8 is our reminder scripture for today. Good morning. Um, and it goes like this. Out of the depths have I cried unto thee, O Lord. Lord, hear my voice. Let thine ears be attentive to the voice of my supplications, if thou, Lord, shouldest mark iniquities. O Lord, who shall stand? But there is forgiveness with thee, that thou mayest be feared. I wait for the Lord, my soul doth wait, and in his word do I hope. My soul waiteth for the Lord more than they that watch for the morning. I say more than they that watch for the morning. Let Israel hope in the Lord. For the Lord, for with the Lord, there is mercy and with him. Is plenteous redemption. And he shall redeem Israel from all his iniquities. For emphasis sake, I want to go back to verses 1 and 2. Out of the depths have I cried unto thee, O Lord. Lord, hear my voice. Let thine ears be attentive to the voice of my supplications. This morning, I want to share with you our thought for today, which is, nevertheless, not my will, but thy will be done. Nevertheless, not my will, but thy will be done. Good morning, Keith. I want us to look at the definition of nevertheless. In spite of that, however, yet. In spite of that, however, yet. Let's go to our scripture focus this morning, which is in Luke chapter 22. Luke chapter 22. Going to read verses 39 and 44 today. And in these verses, we have some lessons that we can gather from this whole experience of the title of our thought for today, nevertheless, not my will, but thy will be done. I'm reading now to you. And he came out and went, excuse me, as he was wont, 
to the Mount of Olives, and his disciples also followed him. Verse 40, and when he was at the place, he said unto them, pray that ye enter not into temptation. 41, and he was withdrawn from them about a stone's cast and kneeled down and prayed, saying, Father, if thou be willing, remove this cup from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but thine be done. And there appeared an angel unto him from heaven, strength, strengthening, excuse me, <clears throat> strengthening him. And being in agony, he prayed more earnestly, and his sweat was as it were, great drops of blood falling down to the ground. Good morning, Sister Kelly. Not, nevertheless, not my will, but thy will be done. Have you ever felt so perplexed overwhelmed with the things of life that it got to a point where you said, God, I don't know if I can do this anymore. I know I have some witnesses because right now, as we are living in this world today, we are always bombarded with different things that are coming at us from different angles, and we have two choices that we can choose, two choices, two ways to go about uh, these situations that we face, two individuals that we can trust. Well, actually, you can only trust one of these individuals because the other individual you can't trust because when the rubber meets the road, when it's time to when things get really tough, this person will leave you by yourself, stranded, but he'll lure you in. He'll have you trusting in his lies. He'll have you believing that he will give you everything. It kind of sounds like uh, that's the devil, right? Because remember when Jesus was in the wilderness and he was uh, uh, being tempted of the devil, uh, the devil promised him all these things. I'll give you this and I'll give you that and I'll give you this. All you have to do, Jesus, is bow down to me. And as Jesus heard this man speak, this fallen angel speak, he would say these powerful words that as we are faced with these different challenges in our lives today, even now, it is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. When you are going through a situation, that's what I want you to remember. Say to yourself or say to that situation that you're facing right now, it is written. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. I want you to hold close to the scriptures. But then the next thing I want you to hold on to is I want you to hold on to prayer. You need to pray in every situation you face in life. I'm talking about when things are going good. I'm talking about when things are going bad. You need to continually pray. 
Mm -hmm. Jesus did it. Look, listen to what he's leaving a lesson for his disciples to follow. He says to them in verse number 40, and when he was at the place, yes, there's a particular place that Jesus would go to to pray. I would suggest to you that you need to find a particular place that you can go to pray. I'm talking about, I'm not saying you can't pray anywhere, but sometimes you have to have a specific place. A place where you meet God and it's just you and him all the time. He said unto them, pray that ye enter not into temptation. Jesus knew what was about to happen in the next few minutes. He, he knew what was going to happen. So he was preparing his disciples for what was going to take place. Jesus does the same thing for us today. God does the same thing for us today. He leaves us examples. It's kind of like the lady a Phoenician woman, and, and Jesus used her as a lesson, and he said, how can I give the food to someone or to the dogs? And, and the woman said, because she had faith, well, even the dogs take the crumbs. They eat the crumbs. So Jesus has left us crumbs, if you will, so that we can hold fast during these dark and evil days. Sometimes you can pray with a group of people, which is important, in public. But you want to know the most important type of praying is in secret. I read it in a book. Public prayer is great. Family prayer is great. But by yourself, in that closet, in whatever place you may find, and you talking to the king of kings and lord of lords, that's a, 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 a beautiful experience that no one can take away from you. Do you need to go back there right now? Has life beaten you up so much that you forgot how to pray? Jesus, uh, 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 Peter, when he was in trouble, he he he, he didn't say a long drawn out prayer. All he said is just, "Lord, save me." If it's just a one word prayer, just say it. God wants you to communicate with Him no matter what. But let's look at Jesus' prayer now. Jesus is about to die. He's about to fulfill the mission that 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 Isaiah prophesied about. He he's going to fulfill the mission that 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 that, that, that Genesis talks about about bruising the head and and his heel is going to be he, he uh, 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 Jeremiah talks about. I, I mean, all throughout the Bible, it emphasizes what the Messiah would do. He would die for the sins of his people. And now everything has come ahead. And so Jesus is on his knees. And Jesus says something that sometimes we often say too. He says to his father in verse 42, Father, if thou be willing, remove this cup from me, Jesus, is saying what's in his heart. He's telling his father what is plaguing him right now, what is tugging at his heart. And he says to him, Father, if you're willing, remove this cup from me. It, it, it's heavy. It, 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 it's, it's a whole lot. He, he's, he's, he's expressing he's being human. He's a human. He's a human. He knows what we deal with. But I love the next word that he says right there. Nevertheless. 
what Jesus is simply saying, in spite of how I'm feeling, in spite of what uh, what this cost, however or yet, I'm going to fulfill my mission. You and I have a mission to fulfill. Tell our story. Tell others about the goodness of the Lord. And let me throw this in. When we say at the end of our prayers, just like Jesus said, nevertheless, not my will, but thy will be done. This is what the Lord put on me last week. When we do that, what we do is we take out of the equation Whatever it is that we want. It's like the conjunction, but or and or 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 yet. You take what you want away from the equation and then you put what God wants as the head. Uh, 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 what the outcome is going to be. And so you're not going to be upset with what the outcome was because you said with your own lips, I said with my own lips, not my will, God, but your will be done. And God's will is best. He knows what's best. He's seen the beginning, or he is the beginning. He is the ending. He is the first. He is the last. If you truly believe that when his will is done, don't get mad at him. When you believe that, don't backslide because you believe it. You said you believe it. Now it's time to put your mouth and your actions to practice because what we tend to do is we say one thing with our mouth and our actions say another word. And last time I checked, a verb means an action word. That's what a verb is, an action word. So we need to be, our mouth and our actions need to be in alignment. And after we trust in the fact that God's will is going to be done, then we should be strengthened just like Jesus was strengthened. Jesus will strengthen us to to be able to handle whatever situation we face in life. That situation at your job, that situation with your spouse, that situation with your children, that situation with friends or acquaintances, that situation with anything that you will face in life. He will strengthen you. Pray. Find your place to pray. Understand that God will fulfill the mission he has for you in your life and understand that he is always there no matter what this life will throw at you. This was so intense, it's uh, 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 this praying. It says, and being in agony, he prayed more earnestly and his sweat was as it were great drops of blood falling to the ground. So Jesus is sitting here basically in the garden, dying, before he even gets to the cross. When we pray earnestly, it's not one of those things where we we, we say that short prayer. No, no, it's a continual, a continual prayer. Even when we're off of our knees, like right now as I'm speaking to you, I'm praying that God helps my mouth to say exactly what he has put inside of me to say to you who are viewing right now because you all need to hear a thus saith the Lord, not a thus saith Robert, but a thus saith the Lord because your situation right now is probably so challenging that you just want to lift up the white flag or wave the white flag as they say. But hold on. As I draw to a close, I want you to know this. 
You're stronger than you think. You are stronger than you think. Because when God is with you, come on now, Romans. If God is for us, who can be against us? Say that to yourself today when you're going through some challenges. If God be for me, who can be against me? Yeah, say that to yourself. Affirm yourself. Uh, 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 encourage yourself in the Lord. Come on now, Psalms. As I mentioned in the beginning, Keep me in your prayers as I prepare for this interview. 845 Central Time. I want to thank God for what he's going to do. No matter what the outcome may be. I'm nervous, but I'm excited at the same time. I know some of you all know what I'm talking about. And when I see you next time, I will have something to share with you no matter what it is but i just want to take this time to give god praise for being so good in spite of myself and i want you to give god praise to 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 thank him for what he has done for you in spite of what you have done or what other people have said listen here We need to understand that people are going to say what they're going to say. But the most important thing or the most important person that we need to be concerned of about somebody saying something to us is God. People are going to say a whole lot about you. But the simple fact that you woke up this morning and he blessed you to see another, that's an indication right there that God still got something for you to do. So as you go throughout the day, do what he has called for you to do. As my sister Kelly always says on our Hands of Faith prayer line, by the way, continue, continue on your mission for the Lord. Let's pray. Father, thank you for bringing us together once again. Bless us now as we go our separate ways. And as Jesus said in the prayer that he prayed to you in Luke, nevertheless, not my will, but thy will be done today. For us in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. God bless you, everybody. We'll see each other next time.